turning gear. As soon as the speed starts to rise above turning gear speed, this device is automatically disengaged. At this point, the operator will shut down the turning gear motor. When the turbine is undergoing a cold start, we must allow sufficient time for the various internal components to be heated by the steam flow and expand as uniformly as possible. As shown by this typical startup chart, it may take several hours to bring the cold unit up to synchronizing speed. The manufacturer normally provides startup charts showing the manner in which speed should be raised for different startup conditions. Make sure that you have a copy of the startup curves for each of your particular turbines. Where the unit is undergoing a hot startup, perhaps after an overnight shutdown, the turbine speed can be raised quite quickly within about 30 minutes. The unit can also be loaded quite quickly. The reason for this is that the turbine metal is already hot, probably around 800 degrees Fahrenheit at the steam inlet. Ideally, we should provide steam to the hot turbine at or above that temperature to prevent cooling and the subsequent reheating. This is not as easy as it sounds. In order to raise the steam temperature, we need to fire the boiler harder. But we cannot do that without having an increase in steam flow from the boiler. Even with all of the superheater drains and all of the reheater drains wide open, it may not be sufficient to provide the desired increase in steam temperature. In units which are installed specifically for two-shift operation, a steam bypass arrangement may be built into the system to permit this increase in steam flow during startup. As we see from this schematic, the bypass system allows you to increase steam flow through the boiler by bypassing the turbine. The excess steam is dumped into the condenser where it is cooled by the circulating water. Of course, there is a heat loss involved, but we do achieve the objective of providing a hot start and improving the life cycle of the turbine. During the run-up of the turbine, care must be given to the critical speeds. Now, what do we mean by this term, critical speed? Well, this refers to a specific speed at which very high vibration occurs due 